Hey everyone, this is Ben. Ben is like any other 60 year old male. He has three grandkids and a supportive wife and is now retired from his job as a carpenter. Today, he decided to go on a walk around the lake by his house. This is a normal exercise and is a part of Ben's normal routine. But after a couple steps when starting his walk, he found that his legs were very stiff and he could no longer walk. He had sore calf muscles for quite some time now, ever since last summer, but he never thought much of it. After a little while, Ben was starting to feel better and was able to manage his pain. However, this improvement didn't last long as one day, Ben had extreme difficulty getting out of bed and could not move around his house easily. His arms felt stiff, his movements were slow, and he found it difficult to do his daily tasks. Ben was struggling and needed the assistance of his son and wife. He was then bedridden for a week. Here, Ben is showing the signs and symptoms of Parkinson's disease, but he is unaware. This is the reality for most patients with Parkinson's. So what is Parkinson's? Parkinson's disease is a progressive neurodegenerative disorder that affects movement. It is the second most common aged-related neurodegenerative disorder after Alzheimer's disease. An estimated 7 to 10 million people worldwide have Parkinson's disease. It affects 100,000 Canadians and an individual is two times more likely to develop Parkinson's if their relative has it. Additionally, 1 in 40 individuals develop Parkinson's in their lifetime and it is more common in males than females. Parkinson's disease has a drastic effect on patients' quality of life as social interactions start becoming more difficult as it progresses. As we saw with Ben, the signs and symptoms include stiffness of the limbs, slowness of movement, loss of automatic movements, which are movements that are made without conscious thought, such as blinking and swinging of the arms while walking, impaired posture and balance, and tremors in various joints such as fingers or hands. As a result, these symptoms can be broken down into three main ones, including bradykinesia, which refers to the slowness of movement. It encompasses akinesia, the lack of movement, and hypokinesia, the smallness of movement. Another major symptom is tremors. This involves dyskinesia, which are involuntary muscle movements related to tics, while also dystonia, which refers to a person's muscles contracting uncontrollably. The contraction causes affected body parts to twist involuntarily, resulting in repetitive movements or abnormal postures. And finally, another major symptom is increased rigidity, which involves the loss of flexibility and difficulty in the bending of joints. So now the big question is, how did Ben develop Parkinson's? What's causing his symptoms? Our brain is a complex organ that communicates with our body through chemical and electrical signals. When these signals are disturbed, it results in a loss of muscle control. This explains why Ben couldn't walk or move as well as before. The basal ganglia is a structure located in the brain that is highly involved in movement. The neurotransmitter that also aids in movement is called dopamine. Patients with Parkinson's disease have low dopamine levels in the basal ganglia, which causes movement disorders. The most common treatment for Parkinson's disease involves the attempt to restore the low dopamine levels in the basal ganglia. Dopamine does not cross the blood-brain barrier, which means that it cannot be administered to the patient. Instead, patients can be given a dopamine substitute which can cross the blood-brain barrier and is used by the brain to make more dopamine, which leads to improved motor movement. With the help from his son and wife, Ben goes to the hospital after a week of being bedridden. However, Ben's family doctor was unsure how to effectively relate the many symptoms together to form an effective diagnosis. As a result, he had to visit a couple of specialists to figure out his disease. Finally, after months of waiting and seeking various specialists, Ben got an appointment with a neurologist. The neurologist asked him to wear a wristband, which could track his motor and non-motor movements, and performed a couple of tests to help her identify Ben's disease. With the combination of the two, she was able to diagnose him with Parkinson's disease. By this time, on top of the symptoms he had developed earlier, he has also developed many non-movement symptoms that aided in the diagnosis of his condition. He described feeling lonely and sad at times and feeling a surge of overwhelming panic. These are symptoms of depression and anxiety, which are non-movement symptoms of Parkinson's. He also displayed excessive drooling and cramping whenever he had his naps or when he ate. There were also various cognitive changes that happened over time, which included problems with attention, planning, language, and memory. At times, Ben found himself mumbling and not able to produce clear speech. This could also be influenced by increased stiffness in facial muscles. Ben's family was not able to recognize these symptoms. 
However, non-motor symptoms can prove to be more troublesome than actual motor ones. Over the next couple of years, Ben faced many obstacles and started treatment. With the help of his occupational therapist, Ben had to relearn how to perform many of his daily activities. This include bathing, getting to bed, and gait techniques. Because there isn't enough dopamine in Ben's brain, this is a possible reason why he has Parkinson's disease and is experiencing these symptoms. To help increase dopamine levels, he was prescribed a medication called Carbidopa Levodopa, which is considered the most effective medication and is used to treat symptoms of Parkinson's disease. This medication works by making its way to the brain and converting to dopamine. Some side effects of Carbidopa Levodopa include dizziness, nausea, headaches, and trouble sleeping. Ben took this medication three to four times a day. This medication was the main and most common treatment plan recommended to Ben and most Parkinson's patients. However, other options provided to patients also include surgery treatment options involving deep brain stimulation, which works by sending electrical pulses to your brain to aid in controlling motor symptoms. In addition, alternative therapies such as yoga, acupuncture, physiotherapy, and occupational therapy are also recommended to many patients. There are no main causes that have been proven to cause the development of Parkinson's disease. However, research shows that it is likely due to a blend of genetics and environmental factors. Exposure to pesticides or head injuries are potential factors that can increase the chances of development over time. Along his journey of recovery and managing the many motor dysfunctions, Ben felt isolated and alone. Similar to Ben, any individual with Parkinson's has the possibility to develop non-motor symptoms later on, such as depression and anxiety. If you or a loved one has Parkinson's, there are various resources and support groups such as Parkinson's Canada and the National Parkinson's Foundation that can provide you with everyday skills such as cooking, dancing, yoga, and also provide educational workshops to help you learn more about what to expect with Parkinson's disease. There are also helplines to speak with fellow patients and also Zoom calls with experts. As a result, these programs have a major focus on improving the quality of life for patients and allowing them to feel more accepted in our current society.